happening today, Fran? Going wild camping. Where are we going? Kinder Scout. We're going to get the train to Edale, yep. I think. Um, and then walk from Edale up into Kinder Scout. Find somewhere quiet, out of the way, and hidden away, and camp for the night. Wake up to the sunrise, hopefully it will be a nice day. And then a long walk tomorrow, back down to Edale, and then home tomorrow night. So, what have we got to take with us? <laughs> Spread it all out here. <laughs> so we've got a bag of food, including these fab pies that Fran's made. Uh, medical bits and bobs, specs, power battery chargers, camera equipment, hand sanitizing gel, personal hygiene stuff, Fran's spare clothes, waterproof jackets, under there, we've got our blow-up mattresses, tiny, small things. Um, I've mentioned camera equipment, including the GoPro I'm holding. Tent, which is a lightweight-ish tent. Uh, map, sleeping bags, blow-up pillows. The most heaviest thing of all is the water we're carrying with us. Spare clothes, and my winter jacket is in there for tonight. Hats walking poles, dog leads, cooking burner, spare gas, energy packs, gels, raincoat for Fran and hopefully if we've got room at the end of it I can pack my drone because I think we'll get some great uh, shots from up there dogs are drone very, wise. Dogs are a bit bemused, they know something is going on but they're oh, not quite sure what. He's a bit uh, confused but so we're looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just, I hope the dogs are going to be okay. But it's a three man tent, so there is room in the tent for them. Yeah, um, all being well. So, yeah, it's going to be good. And uh, just hope that, well, it doesn't really matter if the weather doesn't hold out. We're prepared for yep. everything. We're just going to do it. Yes. So, that's it. All this equipment is uh, basically what we've brought from the house to the boat except for a few bits and bobs that I went to pick up yesterday, the camping gas stove and uh, a few other things. So here we go, two days of uh, hiking. So it all squeezed in, the two bags, lovely. Dogs are really excited, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm really excited too. And we're waiting at the train station, we've got one stop to do, we're at a train station called Chinli and uh, we're waiting for the train to take us one stop to Edale. I don't think we'll be in the Rambler Inn just yet, Fran. It's Friday tomorrow, so once we've been up and down, we might need we'll have earned tomorrow. We'll have earned a beer or two. So we just got off the train and we're heading up a few hundred yards up here to the Pennine Way. I know you find churchyards a bit morbid, don't you? Yeah. I'm really interested in them. And I, well, I used to be. <laughs> it's just yeah, bit too close to home. Bit too close to home. But there's though. there's um, apps or sites that you can go on, aren't there, that tell you who's who famous is buried in. Yeah. And I might start looking into that on our travels because I'm quite I'm not quite interested in it. So here we are, the very start. Of the Pennine Way. Yeah. 268 miles. Won't be doing that today though. I'm afraid, Archie, you're on your lead for a while. He's just jumping on the bit. 
wants to get running. How are you doing, friend? Yeah, all right. It's amazing how much a bit of weight on your back, what a difference it makes to your knees and your heart beating away. It just goes to show, doesn't it? I think my pack, we've estimated, weighs about 20 pound. Uh, it's not that much, but you can feel it. I'll be as fit as a flea by the time I'm finished. We're about uh, two miles in, if that. Heading towards Jacob's Ladder, which is quite a steep stone step, if you like. Otherwise known to me as the Devil's Staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's been so busy, hasn't it? It has, but it's thinning out now. Not many, well, there's nobody coming the same way as us. Everybody's coming off the hills. Uh, maybe they know something. <laughs> but we're down in a little valley now, and it's uh, quite enough. The wind's been quite. Uh, blowing hasn't it up, really, up, up yeah. the top there really blustery so yeah loving it and somebody was almost moved to tears a little while ago well I've just been aching Oops. to do stuff like this for years and years and uh, one thing and another life's just got in the way but um, it's great to be doing the walks that we wanted to be doing now and uh, just taking our time living life as we want Yes. Well, here we go. Back to ascend Jacob's ladder. The dogs aren't making the uh, What's the word? Huffing and puffing noises. Yeah. The dogs aren't huffing and puffing like what we are. Oh, how far have we come with it? I remember being told once that you're, um, when you're walking uphill, the leverage on your knees is three times your weight. Mm -hmm. So, an increase of a stone and a half or two stone you've probably got is the equivalent of carrying six stone uphill. Uh, I don't think I've got two stone on my back. I think I've got about 25 pounds, 30 pounds. Still a lot. Well, that's two stone, isn't it? <laughs> Some people just love to argue. Look at the colour of that sky. That heather down there. What was I saying about inspiration for a weaving? I know. And painting. Yeah. Good idea, eh? That's a good idea. Yes. I think we've done it right. We've done some long walks over the last few weeks, but not only little bits of hill like this. Um, and without backpacks, but uh, we've not just gone straight into it, we have at least broken ourselves in a bit, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> got four or five quite tough walks. So, I know this is nothing compared to what some people do, is it? Uh, for us oldies.
found ourselves a place to pitch up. It's beautiful, right on Kinder Scout. It's a beautiful evening. There's the tent. There's a chilly Fran. <laughs> Dogs are a bit bemused about what's going on. But uh, we're having fun. We're really enjoying it. And uh, dinner's on the go. Macaroni cheese. We've already had a pie that Fran made. But it's beautiful up here. The wind's dropping now and the sky's turning a bit bluer than it was half an hour ago. Technically you're not allowed to camp on uh, anywhere on the Peak District, although it's um, open walking across the, uh, across the Peak District Park itself, you can walk almost anywhere, not having to re be restricted to pathways. Uh, they don't allow camping, but um, there's lots of people do it, we're not making a nuisance of ourselves, we've not got a fire going, and I think they kind of turn a blind eye to it really. Um, if you go on YouTube, there's plenty of YouTubers doing camping expeditions on Kinder Scout. So uh, yeah, it's our first wild camping. We've done plenty of camping in the past. Yeah, we have. Yeah. But uh, this is this is the first wild camp, so we're really enjoying it. And it's uh, we, we didn't pitch up tent the tent until about seven seven thirty tonight, and everything's fine. We're just having something to eat. We'll probably have another cup of coffee. Watch the sun finally go down. Um, I guess we'll be in bed and snuggling down by about 10 o'clock. And um, up again at crack of dawn, this will all be packed away and we'll be on our way before anybody else starts walking again, won't yeah, we, tomorrow? Yeah. So it's I not a problem. We... We're not causing any problem to anybody or anything. So I guess we've done about five miles, do you think, today? Mm, I reckon so. Well, uh, that's it's... five miles uphill. <laughs> Up the devil's staircase, devil's as I call staircase. it. Devil's <laughs> staircase. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's been experience. Really enjoying it. Oh, it's looking a bit black over there. Oh, we made it through the night. It was a bit blustery at times. Sleep was a bit hit and miss at times. Had to get up at about half past midnight and uh, just anchor down the guy ropes with some rocks because the whole tent had uh, virtually collapsed on us. But this is the view this morning. Absolutely wonderful. I would do it again. Let's do it again. I'd do it again, but with more equipment next time. So like a warmer sleeping bag. Yeah. And not sleep on the slope like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit sometimes chilly in the night. We did get a bit cold. Especially me. You were okay. You had thermal leggings on, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, I but, did. Um, kept my socks on. But uh, the quilts and the equipment we got would be okay for ground level but not for 600 meters up above sea level no and also we couldn't we couldn't pitch the tent up when we wanted to we had to keep walking quite a long while until we were out of the way mm. 
And by then we were on top of Kinder Skirt, weren't we, more yeah. or less? Yeah. And the We'd wind got up was there quicker howling. than we expected, didn't we? Yeah. To be honest, yeah. And then it started getting dark, so we had to pitch the tent, didn't we? And thought found we thought what was a flat piece of ground. Slightly raised. <laughs> I thought that's okay, we'll sleep with our heads at the top, didn't we? For guessing that the air beds we've got, which are very, very thin, lightweight camping air beds, are plastic. And the sleeping bags are really slippery. So they all looked lovely, didn't it? Until you laid down and it was like being on a ski slope. <laughs> so you just kept shooting off the bottom of the airbed and spent the night hitching ourselves back up. And then what happened in the middle of the night, it all started blowing down. Yeah, didn't it? The, the wind got really strong, sort of about <laughs> midnight. And the whole tent just went... Because <laughs> the... We got the tent pegged out with the guy ropes, but it's peat. The ground is peat, and it's really soft, wasn't it? So yeah. we had to. I had to get out of bed at midnight. Find some rocks. Find some rocks <laughs> with my headlamp on, <laughs> and anchor the tent down. And the other thing is that the tent is a three-man tent, so it's quite wide, and it's got a little porch area. And we thought this is fine because the dogs can sleep in the porch area. We've got the space of the tent. But it was really cold, so we felt a bit sorry for them and brought them into the tent and they were, they were beside me on a blanket, weren't they? It was fine. But because of the wind, every time I opened my eyes, Archie's sitting there. Look at the rain. <laughs> What's going on? Jess was okay. She was laid, in there, laid down and went to sleep. She was fine. Jess was okay, but Jess was sleeping next to me and Jess snores like a hippopotamus. <laughs> So I've got her, her snoring in my ear and Archie doing this. But we did sleep. It was okay, wasn't it? And the little stove worked well. The stove worked great, yeah. Another addition, I think, would be uh, uh, a water filtering kit that we can get stream water and filter it as drinking water because the, the amount of water we carried really weighed us down, didn't it? It was quite heavy. It was heavy, yeah. And we, and we ran out of water pretty soon as well, didn't we? Well, we did, and also that was another thing that I would do differently. The reason, one reason we ran out of water was we'd, we'd watched other campers, other vlogs, and they'd take all these instant meals with them that you'd need to rehydrate with water. And they were horrible, <laughs> weren't they? they were horrible. It wasn't nice food. Um, and so I think next time we will think a lot more carefully and actually take something that we can cook rather than adding water to food. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a great couple of days. <laughs> First day we filmed loads, the sun was out. Second day the weather wasn't so good and we were exhausted come the afternoon. We'd walked something Why? like we walked something like fifteen miles in the two days and we got lost on the second day. I've got a son that does quite a lot of outdoor stuff and he said to me, Mum, if you're going to Kinderskirt, you must have a compass because up on the top it is just completely bleak. But we knew we were sticking to paths and we've also got compasses on our phone and we'd forgotten to buy a proper compass, haven't we? So both of our phones have got compasses and we thought that would be fine. And we're following the Pennine Way to a point, yeah. And then we went off onto another marked track, which just... Disappeared. <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> and we thought we were following it, and then it ended up ended up at a river that we couldn't cross, and we went back and followed another one. And then decided we really have got to start looking at our compass now, on the phone, and, and everything. There was no signal, was there? There was no signal, no... Um, GPS. GPS. And so all we could do it. Well, we saw some people that we thought this is okay, they must be on the path. And we went to them, but they were Duke of Edinburgh kids that didn't know where they were either. <laughs> what we did in the end was we knew we had to go south, so we just pointed the pointed ourselves south and At just the kept sun. walking. Navigated, we just, by, navigated the sun. by the sun. <laughs> we just kept walking and we came to a to the point more or less where we camped overnight. So But it was great. I really enjoyed getting lost because we saw things there that we we wouldn't have seen didn't we you know yeah we went to some up to the other rocks called um wall packs wall packs yeah um and yeah we did find some stuff that we wouldn't have seen otherwise so uh, but we were really tired and exhausted weren't yeah, we yeah second day the bags weren't so heavy because we drunk most of the water and we'd eaten all the food so it wasn't too bad but uh by the time we got to the pub at four o'clock on 
the next day we were absolutely whacked weren't we yeah. absolutely done in but we recovered really quickly i mean physically we were okay the next day but i think mm. we were a bit tired for a few days weren't we and the weather's not been really that good to go out again since is it but you said this morning we should we should now be planning the next trip shouldn't we yeah we should finding somewhere else to go so anyway that's <laughs> us doing kinder scout wild camp back to normal with the next episode and you'll be seeing some of this that's coming up now in the next episode so thanks again for watching thank you cheers and uh, see you next time